This next section counterexamples to a conjecture. To disprove a statement, provide a situation called a counterexample. A counterexample uses the same set of assumptions as the conjecture you want to disprove. So we're not using anything different than what the information that we're given, but has the result that disagrees with the conjecture. We assume that one, counter one counterexample is all that's necessary to disprove a conjecture. You don't need to show 10 counterexamples. All you need is one and you say, ah, that statement is false. Conjecture. Everyone in my family has a big nose. Evidence. This is the inductive reasoning part. Me, my parents, the pattern. Me, my parents, grandparents, children, aunts, uncles, cousins, they all have big noses. Everybody has a big nose. But the counter example could be, aha, but your niece Zelda, I don't know who is named Zelda except for Zelda, has a little button nose. Therefore, your initial conjecture is untrue. So you found one counter example. Uh, Link's friend Zelda does ha not have, <laughs> therefore, she does not have a big nose, she has a very small nose. So let's look at some examples giving a counter example for each of the following statements. So here we have if n is a whole number, then n squared is bigger than n. Well, I can actually, I can gather a lot of information about this. I could say, here's four, that's a whole number. Let's look, four squared. Well, you know what? That's equal to 16. 16 is bigger than four. And I can keep on going and going and going and going with all these different uh, examples. However, is there a counter example? Well, are you aware that whole numbers actually include zero? Well, what's zero squared? Zero squared is zero. This isn't bigger than zero. If they changed the statement and said n squared could be greater than or equal to n, then you know what? That might prove true, but we'd have to again prove it with a uh, different reasoning. But with inductive reasoning, we can show that there's one counterexample with zero. It's a whole number. Uh, therefore, that statement, n squared bigger than n, doesn't hold true in every case. All numbers that end in one are prime numbers. You know what? That's almost true. One. That's prime. 11, that's prime. 21, wait a second. That one is divisible by 3, right? Because 3 times 7 is 21. Therefore, we found one counterexample. That's an untrue statement. Okay, we found one counterexample. Last one, all positive fractions are between 0 and 1. I have good discussions with my kids about this. We often look at the, the values between 0 and and one, and we can say, you know what? I can find a lot of fractions in between those numbers. I can take uh, one half, one third, one quarter, one fifth. These are all between zero and one. I'm not saying that these are bigger than another. I'm just saying these are all different fractions. And you know what? There's actually an infinite number of fractions between zero and one, which means there's an infinite number of numbers between zero and one. However, you can write fractions like this, can't you? Seven over three. That's not between 0 and 1. That's actually greater than 1, right? So all you need is one counterexample to prove that that statement is, in fact, false. So just make sure that you can, you're able to find counterexamples. Um, look at the statement, provide one counterexample, then you can show that the statement is untrue.